was active or the you know the working of the call of God in my life. And I was in love with church even as a baby, as a child. Amen. Amen. And uh, after this 49 years, you know, I stand and every time, around hundreds of times, I have had this thought in my mind and God reminded me and how God called me long back to be here today, what I'm doing today as a pastor. Amen? Amen. Do you understand? In advance, he had done stuff. That time I didn't understand. But praise God, today each one of you can understand. And today you can hear this. As a child, I did not hear that. And, uh, and, and uh, I'm going to show you a video and some pictures, okay? So I'm going to take you back to your mother's room. Probably you may not know how you look. But it might give you a little bit of idea how you look. Video? Uh, yes. So, so just pay attention. You're going to enjoy this. Cells will become the amniotic sac and placenta. The blastocyst then sheds its protective casing in a process <coughs> called patching and burrows into the lush uterine wall. Around week five, your developing baby is the size of a sesame seed. The cells that once formed the blastocyst's inner cell mass begin organizing and arranging, giving shape to the young embryo and forming primitive <coughs> organs. Your baby's brain and spinal cord are visible through his translucent skin. Right around this time, your baby's circulatory system also forms, and his heart begins to beat. <coughs> Your baby looks more like a tiny tadpole than a human. He's drawing nutrients and oxygen through the newly formed placenta and umbilical cord. By week nine, the embryonic tail is gone. Your baby's looking more human every day. With protruding limbs and fingers, a defined nose, mouth and eyes, and tiny earlobes. Your new resident is about the size of a grape and weighs a fraction of an ounce. It's hard to believe how rapidly one cell evolves in such a short time into the unmistakable body of a baby. You heard the lady say sesame seed, right? Yeah. So look at your sesame seed. Otin kodeko. Let's see that. <coughs> that was your size. That was my size. Where's Antonius? Yeah, look at me. Look at your size today. <laughs> Joan is another one there. Yeah, but me, look at me. But you can't even hold this sesame side uh, seed in your hand. You have to look at this way. That was you. That was me. Amen? Amen. And, and something more, I, I just want to remind, uh, just can you put the pictures, uh, a few of them. But, but listen to this, okay? So the starting size of us was sesame seed. And um, if, say, suppose if a mother, um, the, the babies, if the mother was pregnant, your mother or my mother, when did she came to know that she was pregnant? It took her what? Three weeks? I was studying a little bit of medical and it says that it takes three weeks to... It doesn't depend. <laughs> it's three weeks to know. <laughs> it takes three weeks to know that you're pregnant. Um, and then for doctor, okay? Now for doctor, we studied four years of medical, maybe more. They got all this machine. How many of you, when you were a child, went through ultrasound? I mean, my time there was no ultrasound, so I didn't. <laughs> but I think, uh, Zach, you must have done this, yeah. yeah. Okay, ultrasound. So, so some of you guys know what is ultrasound. But it's a, now for doctor to see a child in their ultrasound machine, it takes four to six weeks. And um, right now, Chris is the one who works in the lab, so he's got some medical touch. Um, 18 to 18 to 20 weeks okay it takes 18 to 20 weeks it took 18 to 20 weeks for Johan 
Trisha, me, um, uh, Trinda, or even uh, um, Camille, uh, to all of us know whether you were a boy or you were a girl. How many weeks? 20 weeks. 18 to 20 weeks. Um, I think girls are more faster, so it could be 18 for girls and boys, 20 weeks uh, to really develop and for this machine to really see something to say that you are a boy or you are a girl. Amazing? Yeah. How God has made you and me? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> and then, um, so then after 20 weeks, uh, now my parents didn't know who I was during that time. They were not so much, uh, but there were some ladies, there were some people that they would look at a woman and would guess that it could be a girl, it could be a boy or some trouble. I think it's, uh, if, if um, um, my wife had a lot of trouble, she would uh, have a lot of hard time uh, with my son uh, when she was pregnant. And... Um, uh, some did say that it's a boy, looking at her, some of my relatives. But I remember always when my, my boy was in her womb, we didn't know. Yeah, we had not checked, we didn't know, we didn't want it to know also. There was a system there, but we said no. Uh, she decided not to do that. I remember my Maoshi, my, my, my mother's sister. She came to me and she said, you know, you still have some more time, which was six months of her pregnancy. She said to me, after seventh month, the sex of a boy or girl changes. Then it's fixed, it's permanent. Then you cannot pray. But you still have a time to pray whether you want a boy or girl. Now that's, that's a kind of a... Um, you know, thing that people in the olden days would do. And, and, and that when Paul is writing all these things, remember these are olden days writing, right? That these people were around. And I was, when my auntie told me this, I began to think because I was already in ministry, I was mature, I was, I knew, but I started connecting all these things to the scriptures or to the way God does stuff in our life. Amen? But now the medical uh, uh, says, uh, it proves that, you know, um, why would uh, the doctor would not know whether it's a boy or a girl? Why would, I mean, there's a technology, there's all these things, but it takes such a, such a weeks uh, to know whether you are a boy or a girl. Now, in the Bible, let's read uh, Jeremiah chapter 1 and uh, verse 5. Let's do it together. I know you before. I need you, the Lord says, even before the doctor, even before your parents or anything. Who God need? You. You. Amen. Can you say me? me. God need me. Before even I was formed in my mother's womb, before even I was born, he had a he had a separated me, he had a set me apart. Amen? Amen. He has set you apart. Now, Amplify Version, Ephesians chapter 1, 11, that we read earlier. Amplify says, you know, um, NLT, it says um, advance. Uh, ESV, it says predestined. Amplify says chosen, appointed, beforehand. Beforehand, appointed, chosen, predestined, advanced. Which, which word you would understand better? Just pick it up for yourself today. And keep in your heart today. That I was predestined, or I was chosen earlier, I was appointed beforehand that God had done all the things to me, for me. Keep the picture on. And keep looking at the picture and remind yourself this was me. The sesame seed was the size that that uh, that uh, I was in. I mean, this picture. Can you say, is it a boy or girl? No. I can't. 
what colors of hair, what skin colors, nothing, nothing. You can't mention anything. Can you just think about the amazing God that we have? That, you know, this is who you are, and the Bible says that, you know, He already had a plan for your life. He had already written stuff for what you will be doing. He had chosen you. He, I mean, we say that at the age of 22, I took baptism. At the age of 22, I came to know the Lord. I was converted. You know, those blind words are there. Conversion and converted and all this kind of stuff. <laughs> Don't you think that your conversion was, was, was before, before even you came into your mother's womb? Praise the Lord. In India, we have a conversion law. You can go in jail if you're baptizing people in the rivers or, or if you're going to do a, a, a evangelism. Middle East, you can be in prison straight away to carry Bible, leaflets or anything, and you can be in jail for, for a lifetime. Uh, many times you can be killed, and they blame saying conversion. But, but here, the conversion has already been done. Long, long ago. It was planned by God. So, if you are in a country where there is a strict law, if tomorrow there is a strict law that comes up and comes in, anything would change in your life? What God had planned will happen. Amen? Amen. What God had planned has happened, and what God has planned will happen even in the days to come in India and Middle East and various of places. Praise the Lord. Praise he has chosen people. So somewhere they will hear the gospel. Amen. He has chosen people, so he would somewhere have the Bible go to them. Amen? Amen. He has chosen people, so somewhere he also has a plan for another pastor, for David, for Antania, or for, De uh, for, for Sam, or for, for Trinda, or for Trisha to, to say something, to speak somewhere. Because that message, that evangelism is for somebody. Amen? Because he has planned long ago for that person to hear that. My son was, was uh, leading worship in Victoria. In one of the evangelism, which was on Tuesday at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And as he was singing, one guy, um, if you know Victoria, how many of you know Victoria? There's a little band, there's a watch over there, it's called Little Band. And there's a big circle junction. From, and in the middle of that junction, we used to stand and, and Johnny... Theophil and uh, his father still does the evangelism there. Uh, but we were there and my son was singing. And towards the Westminster Road, towards the Westminster Road. You remember now? There's a McDonald and then you still walk. Now towards that side, somebody from Lewisham had come for his work. For some work that he had. And he was on the road and he hears a singing. It's a big distance now, okay? But he hears a voice of a singing. He doesn't know exactly what the words are, but he feels it's the song that I know. It's the spirit that I can connect with. And he feels that that, that voice, that singing, is something for him. Touching him, doing something, so he needs to walk back. So he started looking for that song. He started looking where the voice is coming from. And he walks, he walks, and he walks right in a place where Zeph and we all were doing evangelism. He comes over there, he opens up his mobile, he takes the, the shooting of Zeph singing. He sees me, he sees the others. We say hello, but he doesn't stop, he doesn't talk, doesn't say anything, and he walks, and he's gone. Now, after a few years, me and Zeph and somebody else was going to be in one church, but I was one of them who was going to say something. Now, this person is in that church, and the pastor... And some others are discussing, discussion now, this, there's a discussion happening that we are coming. And in that discussion, he says, I know these people. I've met them. He's not seen our picture. He doesn't know our name. But he says, I know these people. I've met them. Then we come to that church. We do what we have to do there, preaching and service finishes. He comes with tears and shows me a video in his mobile.
for years, he still kept them alive. And that video. He said that day, God spoke to me. I was in tears, but I was not showing you guys that I was crying that day. He said, I walked crying and repenting and saying sorry to the Lord. He said, I had denied Jesus. I had left the church. I was not going to church. I was not praying for years and years. But that day, God spoke to me. And he said, the same day I called the pastor. And the same week I went to the church. And since then I've been in the church. Not just in the church, but he said, I'm serving the Lord. I'm in ministry. I'm doing everything. God has a plan for you and me. God had a plan for this brother. Amen? You just walk thinking that you just go to Tesco. I'll tell you on the way to Tesco, God has a plan. Predestined. Pre-planned. And He's doing something in yours and my life. Amen? There's not one day, there's not one tree, there's not one prayer, there's not one time that you open your Bible to read is by mistake. It is predestined. It is planned in advance. Amen? Amen. So don't take anything just lightly. You will be in a big loss if you do that. You would miss a big miracles. You may miss something big that God has predestined or in advance has planned for you and me. Or for your life. But I want to encourage you today. Take everything very serious. That everything that happens in your life, even a that, even a that, God is doing something behind that head. If it's a stomach pain, if it's a fever, if it is anything, there's something happening over there in your life. Don't just miss it for saying, oh, I'll take tablet, or oh, I'll go to doctor, or oh, I'll go to the hospital, or oh, I'll do this and do that. No. I would encourage you to just look up to Jesus first and see what He is trying to do into your life. Don't just close your Bible because you're just reading the Bible for that day and just walk away and get busy with your life. No. Turn your face again into that Word and see if God is doing something. If God is speaking something. Don't just come to church for what reason or whatever it is. But come to church knowing that there is something God has for me. Amen? Amen. That every preaching, every song, every prayer, everything that happens. Maybe today the preaching might not speak to you. Maybe today the song may not speak to you. But maybe Jenny's sweater color might speak to you. God can use that color of the sweater. Amen? Amen. God can use somebody's a glass of water giving to you. God might speak to you. Amen? He can use anything. He's a God who plans everything in advance. Don't just say that you just wanted to be in the church so you are here. No. It was written, it was planned in advance. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Do you believe that? Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise Where you begin your life. Now, I did take this for my children. I remember it was exciting. But when I was sitting there and hear my mother, my, my wife's belly up and, and she's lying on the, on that, uh, what do you call the bed? Uh, the, what do you call it? It's bed, right? Whatever it is, the hospital, the doctor. And the, the, the doctor is now going with these things and there's a small computer around. And, and I'm trying to understand, where is my baby? Where is there, Patricia? But I never understood the first scan that we did. And the doctor was trying to explain and I was still not getting into the, that's the baby, that's the child. Yes? When you look at all this stuff and you look at the Bible, when you read the words and scriptures and when you understand what God is trying to say to you and me, that I could not even understand Zeph there, I couldn't understand Trisha there. And Fiona couldn't understand Zach over there. Or Patsy couldn't understand Luke and Mark there. But God had already understood and planned and everything was done. And it was all according to the plan of God. Things was happening in that small place. 
Amen. In the night, we put uh, this mother's, uh, what, what do you call that? White noise. Quite no white, white noise. noise. Uh, white noise. Every day, put, I'm not used to that. But it says that that's the, when, when the baby is in the womb, that kind of uh, noise is in her womb when the baby hears that. What? The waterfall. Isn't it the waterfall noise? That's what you and me were hearing, listening to. But now we could just see it on YouTube and, and, and understand. Oh, that was, but you didn't even know, remember that. Mm -hmm. Amen. But God had a plan for all this. For the little womb, for the little bag in the, in, in, in the stomach. And, and it was fascinating to see my wife's stomach grow bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And it was amazing to see now how does this baby inside and what is it do I do there? And then, uh, and then the exciting thing was that if the baby would move, she would move and say, oh, look, look here. And then I did try and touch and feel the baby so many times. And I would not feel it, but God had already touched you. I, as a father, could not touch my baby on that stomach, but God had already touched you and me. Isn't this amazing? That in that womb, God had already touched the delicate something that was there as a sesame seed. And it was still delicate and it was still soft and it was still tiny. And it was taking up a shape, it was growing. And to grow, the mother had to eat various of stuff and things and look after. The mother was doing its part, but God had already done his part long ago. Amen. And because God had done her, all his part long ago, then whatever Trinda, whatever you as a mother could do, it won't harm the baby. The weather could not harm the baby. Amen. The fever and the cold and every other stuff. People are dying in this coronavirus these days. But do you know that babies are still born in coronavirus? Because God had planned. Amen. He knew that there's going to be a virus. There's going to be a, something called coronavirus. People will be dying. But this baby will not die. So babies are not dying. There are pregnancies happening. People are still getting pregnant. There are deliveries happening continuously. Amen. In fact, two of our babies in the church were born during the peak hours of first uh, coronavirus when it hit. And one of them is Daniel. And he's growing beautiful. Amen. Everybody was worried, but God was not worried. God knew that Daniel had to be Daniel at this time, and the virus would not touch, and, and it exactly happened, and we can witness that. Praise the Lord. During your time and my time also, there were a lot of sicknesses, a lot of trouble, a lot of problems. During your time and my time also, there were trucks and buses and cars and during your time and my time also, the weather was bad and good and all that was happening. But the Lord had already said that I planned for you. So nothing would touch you and nothing would harm you. Amen. Amen. Praise, the Praise the Lord. Should I read one more time, Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5. I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. In your mother's womb. The mother, sometimes you can forget what was your mother's womb was. When you know what your womb was. But remember today, your womb and the mother's womb too. And remember one thing, that God had already planned for you, for your children, and for everybody. In fact, sometimes I feel the, the, the ladies have more faith than a man. I wonder if the ladies understand this part more than a man because we don't have a womb in our stomach in fact we don't feel even pain of any pregnancy or any other stuff am i right man so maybe <laughs> uh, so maybe the, the, the ladies understand better but if he does praise the lord then the ladies must pray more amen then the ladies will have faith more then ladies must move the mountain for man amen amen because God has really done this beautiful and the ladies has got an opportunity to go through and experience what God has done. So what it says then, before you were born, I set you apart, appointed you as my prophet to the nations, to the nations. 
With that, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. And let's read it together. For we are God's Do you need a lipstick now? To paint yourself? You are a masterpiece. Amen. Amen. You are a masterpiece. You need jewelry, you can just, just throw the jewelry out. I'm a masterpiece, hallelujah. I'm a beautiful, I'm handsome. I'm good looking, I'm tall, I'm absolutely, you know, if I stand, my wife's heart just bubbled. And um, if Clayton calls on the phone from Saudi, here, you know, Fiona start dancing all over the house. Because she's beautiful. Amen. Praise the Lord. You are masterpiece. I am masterpiece of who? God. Of God. Of God. Yes, the beautiful girl or the beautiful handsome man you married and you said, wow, he's the one, she's the one. But the belly starts coming out and the A starts growing and the glove, and you know, the, 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 what do you call this? The, 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 the start. Are you a masterpiece for that person? Are you a masterpiece at that? But God doesn't change this. The word of the Lord is same for you. Even if you're old, as you were looking when you were young and a child, beautiful, masterpiece, and, and handsome and everything, he, see, see, he still sees you and me. Handsome, masterpiece, beautiful. Amen? People might say, oh, you're old. People might say, oh, you're in 50s now. You know, the baby is coming out. Yeah, you need to do some walk and all that. But when Jesus is now, you're still a beautiful, handsome person for me. Am I right? Yes. yes. Praise the Lord. Do you believe that? Do you want to say to yourself, confirm it. Confirm it to yourself. I'm a masterpiece. Confirm it. It's confirmed. It's confirmed. I'm a masterpiece. Confirm it. Yes. You can lock it now. Look it, I'm a masterpiece. A devil cannot come and say anything to you and lie to you. And, and, and nobody on the road and nobody on the... And, and, I mean, the girls over here who are from India, of course, I'm sure you hear also it happens, but I've not seen since I've come. But in India, I've seen that. Probably I did, maybe a few times. God forgive me. When girls are walking around, they always say something, right? When a girl is walking, the boys always yeah. say and I think there is a vessel also, a particular vessel. Whistle, whistle. Whistle, whistle. Do you remember, girls, what whistle you used to get? <laughs> Jenny, what did you get in the last month when you were in Goa? <laughs> you must have got... But, but, but one day, Trisha was walking uh, uh, on the street and she comes home and she says, you know, one man was staring at, at me. <laughs> she noticed it. There's a whistle, there's staring, there's a looks, yeah? You, you girl notice that how we men do stuff. Sometimes men are bad. But I'm changed man today. Okay, and some of the men over here, they're changed too. Praise the Lord, so you guys are in a safe place. But, remember, what was that look? And remember the look. If you're gone 40, 50, if you're with a child, if you're carrying a baby, do they wrestle that time if the baby is in the hand? The, 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 the mind of a man changes. But the good news today is that the mind of God never changes. Amen? You are a masterpiece, you are a masterpiece. He doesn't wrestle. Is it right? Wrestle. He doesn't give a certain look. He just has one thing, and that is you are beautiful, handsome, my masterpiece. You're my, my precious daughter. You're my precious child. Amen? I've chosen you. I've got a plan for your life. I've written, I've done. And is he, in any of the scripture that I read, that he forgot any time? Did he make any mistake? Oh, today the population has grown. There's more people in London today. And there are more uh, uh, nationalities and whatnot. And did he forget when you went on underground and the train was packed and full? Did he forget when, 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 when you went in the crowd, somewhere in the market, in a supermarket? Did he forget? Did he? No. 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 He remember. 
he still said, that's, that's my masterpiece. That's the one that I've called and chosen. Amen? Yes. Praise the Lord. Do you believe that? Yes. yes. Do you believe that? Yes. Everybody? Yes. I, I don't get... Do you believe that? Yes. You're a masterpiece? Yes. Amen? Yes. Called by God, chosen by God. Yes. Johan, Ashok? Yes. Yes? God had a plan and God has a plan. It still carries on and it will come to pass and it will happen. You saw your video, you saw your picture, you heard the scripture, you heard three scriptures I read, two from Ephesians and one from Jeremiah. Then the question now is this, are you wasting time in certain things or something? Are you missing out something? Have you missed out something? Have you ever found out and spent enough time to know what was that plan of God? When I came to Wembley four years ago, specifically God spoke to me about deliverance, casting out demons. That was a specific, specific call. Somebody over here in this area, a woman, one of the wife of her, she was working in one of the factories. She didn't know anything about what I'm planning, what I'm doing. She didn't know anything about what God has spoken to me. It was only Trinda, it was only my two children knew about it. We are not told any of our relatives. Nobody we mentioned. We didn't ask anybody to pray for us or God has spoken to us. This, this sister was going to the factory where she works. God began to speak to her. Raju, 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 that's what she mentioned. Raju, Raju, Raju. Throughout the day, Raju, Raju, Raju. She finishes a job, she comes back in the bus. She's sitting there, Raju, Raju, Raju. And then she responded and God spoke to her, that Raju must plant the church over here. That same minute, that same hour, that same second, Trisha had prayed. Me and Trisha in the kitchen making chapati. And Trisha said, God, we've been praying, asking you, please speak to us. Where should we plant the church? A call comes right there when she's praying. And she just said, Amen. And the call, the bell rings on the phone and says, God wants you to plant church in Wembley. How beautiful the plan of God is. Not next day, not after one week. She finishes the prayer. The woman, the sister gets my name, Raju Raju, from morning till evening. And then she calls at his church in Wembley. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Then the church begins. And the devil comes up twice and says, Stop evangelism. Sorry, stop deliverance. Otherwise, I'll break your church. Twice. Back to back. That was two years ago. Amen. And I shared the story of that demonic encounter that happened in Forest Hill. And how the devil was speaking. The devil was mad because the church had come. The devil started having trouble because there was deliverance happening. Amen. There was demons were, were, were leaving people's body. And the, the, the devil was at work when God on the other side powerfully at work. Amen. And God is still winning. The devil lost it. Praise the Lord. But the plan of God was in advance. I never thought that I'll be in Wembley. I never dreamed. My, my wife, my children never dreamed. God had predestined. God had planned earlier. Amen. What else you want to know about your life that he has not planned? What still more doubt you have that you could say to God, is this true? Is this right? Is this the one? Is that the one? Is she is the one? Is he is the one? How long you still need to waste time and keep making mistakes after mistake? How long and how many days and how many hours and months and years you need that you would waste every year and every month that is so beautiful that you can be happy and peaceful? I mean, how long is just going to go wrong and wrong and wrong all the time in your life and miss out? There is a God who loves you so much and He has planned in advance for your life. How long? But with that, can I ask you, have you missed anything? 
Have you gone wrong? Have you done wrong? Have you still doing things wrong? And have you been in somewhere which is wrong, wrong, wrong? In the middle of um, um, peak hours, and it's an overground train that I was from Forest Hill to Canada Water. And from Canada Water, I was going to change the train uh, to Jubilee and was going to go to Holloway Road. If you know Holloway Road where uh, the football uh, ground is, um, Arsenal. Arsenal football ground, just very next to that. Peak hour, crowded train, absolutely no place to move. Absolutely no place at all to move. And the Lord says to me, do you love me? In that crowd place, crowded, Jesus said, do you love me? And as soon as he said, the tears began to fall. And I'm hiding my tears because there were people and I'm looking at if anybody's going to see me. In a crowded place, rushing our People are running. All that they have in their mind is job, 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 job. That day also, I was in my, my mind to get the Jubilee, and I needed to be on time. In fact, before time, that is what I used to do regularly. What was in mind? Job, job, job. What was in God's mind? Do you love me? What was in the mind of Jesus? Are you mine? Are you doing the thing that I've called you to do? Are you following the thing that I had already planned long ago? Before you, when you came into this world, I brought you into this world not to do what the world wants you to do, but I brought you into this world for the thing that I planned for you to do. Isn't this the scripture that explains that way? Am I right or am I wrong? Everyone is busy. Job, job, job. Here this beautiful Jesus says, do you love me? Do you love me? Are you going to be still busy running for your job, 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 job? You come to church and you're still disturbed, disturbed, disturbed. You, you, you pray but you're disturbed. You open your Bible at home. And you're just disturbed, disturbed, disturbed. And he's still longing to say, do you love me? He wants to hear, yes, I love you. You know, when God speaks, you cry. That is what I have experienced. Whenever God speaks, I cry. Is there any eye that doesn't cry when he speaks? Is there any body so hard and hearted, so tough, that this beautiful voice of God cannot break in for so many years that you continue to do the same thing? Is your body has become so hard, so tough, that the Spirit of God just doesn't touch you anymore? For Jesus, is your tears have dried up completely? Or there is still some tears left that you can cry when he says, do you love me? When he touches you in worship, when he calls you in message. Do you want to go from this place still hard and hearted? Tough body, tough heart. No, God, job is first for me. Money first for me, Lord. Yes. In the worship, you're my Jehovah Jireh. But in front of my owner, it's my salary, it's my job, it's my employer. In the worship, Lord, I can lift hand and say, you move the mountain. Amen. And in the worship, Lord, I sing again. Do it again. Do it again. <coughs> it's a beautiful song, God. It's my favorite song. But when it comes to Bill or Jesus, it's my job. It's my salary. It's my employee. It's my business. What is your answer today? What are you going to say today? If this, what I'm speaking through the Holy Spirit, that if Jesus himself stand over here, with whatever picture you have got about him, 
or just a cross just comes down from heaven and the cross now just has a mouth coming out and speaks and asks you a question where are you you remember there that Adam and Eve you remember God who was walking in that garden and what did he say to Adam and Eve Adam what where are you Adam, Adam, where are you? And where was Adam hiding? Behind his job? Behind his fear? Behind his love for money? Behind his worries and anxieties? Where was Adam and Eve hiding? Hiding in themselves? And hiding and saying, no, 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 let's not see God. Let's not listen to him. Let's, 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 let's. We are naked. We are really naked today. If we don't get any touch to hear and to see the picture of you and to see the sesame seed and to say that this was me, I couldn't even apply the job. I couldn't even hold the, the pain. Can you show the picture? I couldn't even read any book. I couldn't even the picture of a baby. I couldn't even even understand pound and rupees and dollars and all that. I couldn't even choose flat or house. I couldn't choose what bed sheet and what color of jeans. I, I couldn't even know what shoes I was going to wear. God had called you there even long before then. Where are you? Are you in your call? Are you in the plan of God? Or you are out, lost somewhere? Are you thinking? Amen? Are you thinking? Where are you? Where are you? If you want to respond to the Lord where you are today, you go before Him. Praise the Lord. What are the good things that we just read? And that's my last thing. But I want to take some time today to just pray and uh, spend time maybe just in repentance. But we wear the masterpiece. We have planned long ago to do good things. To do good things. So can you put uh, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10, the one that we read earlier? To do the good things. In that full train, back train, I was a missionary standing there who loved God like anything. Who could live for Jesus. In fact, my son actually says to my wife, he said, Dada is going to die. Dada would be killed in... in, in uh, preaching the gospel someday. That boy, it was a story I think four or five years ago, right? That child understood that his father is in love for gospel. Jesus. That even he's going to be martyred, he's going to die, or somebody's going to kill him. And he had prepared his mind that that's his father. But that's who I am in a reality. That I could die for gospel. I'm not scared to go to Libya, not scared to go to Pakistan not scared, looking for a chance. In fact, I missed once, but I'm going to try again to go to Libya. And uh, when I carried, started carrying that big 10 feet cross on the road, in Delhi, nobody came with me to carry the cross. Many churches, many people. Nobody came. Everybody was scared. It was... The government was in session, and and the parliament was in session. Then it was a it was a BGP government, which was which is so against the, the gospel and the church. And uh, nobody showed that 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 uh, what do you call that excitement? The thing that I, no, I want to come. I want to I want to walk with you now. Me and Pastor John, who came from Goa, flew from Goa uh, with me to walk, and then we were going to go to Odisha to another state uh, from there. We walked. We walked. 
when a policeman comes and I was asking him something, um, which road that, that followed, and he said, the road goes inside. So he was trying to signal me that I can put you in. I'll arrest you. And the policeman next to him said, let go. Keep quiet, let go. And I, I heard, I saw the intention, I looked at him, and started walking. There was a man over there, a Hindu guy, with a small hotel there, restaurant life. Solicitors, businessmen, rich people standing there. It was a lunchtime. Crowd over there. And I passed through there. And I saw a baker sitting begging there, but had a tiny legs and hand. I kept the cross aside and I said to John, I said, let's give something to this person to try. And I went to the baker and I said, do you want to eat something? Are you hungry? So what do you want? And he told me a dish, which you get in that same place that I passed. So I kept the cross, kept John over there, and I walked over there. And I said, can I have the plate of some stuff? Then I said, can I give this plate to that beggar over there, and I'll pay for you. And um, he said, okay, okay. So I went, I gave, and I came back. I wanted tea, and I wanted to pay. So I got, I said, can I have tea? And then I removed money to pay. Hindu guy had stuff on his uh, head. I was there. I'm standing with the note now to give him. He looked at me. He said, "No money." I said, "Lelo, take this is for, for what I brought." He said, "No, no, please don't give me money." <clears throat> and um, I forced him. I said, "No, no, no, come on! I have the money." I want to pay, I said, I've got the money, but yet Lelo, koi baat ne, but it's not hai I said, Nene, Mijen, you can ask me anything here, but don't tell me to take money from you. A Hindu guy. A Hindu guy. In that crowd, he's busy then, I said, can I pray for you? He just didn't say, I'll let me put up this and that and call somebody now. There in the crowd, he stood like this, Closed his eyes and stood like this. Humble. Action was like this. In the crowd. And now I'm praying when everybody's watching. And he said, Amen. And he said, Thank you. And I <laughs> there are people who never went to church, who never read Bible, looked at the cross, understood the cross, saw the cross. Here we are. Same cross. We have cross on our roof. We have cross, some of us in our neck. We have cross on our walls in the heart. What's your response to the cross? What do you respond to the cross when it comes to the cross? What do you do? What do you do when you see the cross? You just pass by, you just look around, another cross and just gone. When Jesus said in that crowd, do you love me? Some of you heard this story again and again, you might hear more. What did he say to me? He said, go home. Don't go for job. Three times, he said, go home. Don't go for job. Sometimes I think this. Why would God speak to me? Do you love me and go home? Don't go for that. What did he chose to do with me? I, I asked God so many times. And I got answered a few times too. God knew that I'm going to listen to him. God knew that I'm going to obey. If God has spoken to you and you continue to walk in disobedience, continue to remain rebellious and hard-hearted, what do you think will happen? But if you become a person when God says, Hello, He said, Here I am, Lord. Adam, Adam, yes, Lord, I'm coming. What do you think the response of God would be with you? He will speak to you again and again. Amen? Amen. He would ask you, say things and, and, and ask you stuff to do. He knows that you're going to do it. 
Amen? Amen. Why do you think that I said this also to the Lord? Why God me for the cross? Why you ask me to carry cross? Number one, I felt God was saying, I knew you would do it. Amen? I knew you would walk with the cross. He must have spoken to so many. But so many just chose to take their bus or train or bag which you use for the job. They didn't take a turn and say, where is this cross? How can I make it? Where can I walk? Do you want to continue to be that hard-hearted person? Or do you want to be a person today to change? Do you? What, what is your answer today? What are you going to say today to the Lord? He's calling out, saying, Do you love me? He's calling out and saying, Where are you? Where are you? I planned for you long back. I waited, I knocked, I came, I speak again and again. But you again and again choose to run away and do what you want to do. Where are you? Amen? Are you going to respond to the Lord tonight? Or are you going to be that boring Christian, that boring person? The cross doesn't affect at all. The message doesn't affect at all. You're still going to be busy in your life and you're still going to continue in your bad habits and wrong things. What are you going to do? Come on, Trisha. I need some answers. John, what are you going to do? What are you going to do, Trisha? Evie, what are you going to do? What are your responses to that? Amen. Amen. Do your best to be obedient. That's what you need. Obedient. Fear the Lord. Praise the Lord. Do your best. Who else? Respond to God. Respond to God. Respond to God. I have met one guy, but it's my life also today. I can stand before you. Um, I hardly worked. When went once to actually raise funds for somebody. But I trusted God coming to London as I was trusting God in India for my finances. And um, two days ago, I said to my wife, I said, look how God has blessed us. Look how God has blessed us. What we have today what would we have when we have two salaries, four salaries? Or was it better to trust God? And my answer was, it was better that I trusted God. Amen? Mm -hmm. I want to say this to you, it is better to trust God than to apply, than to just continuously hold the job and just be on, on that money, money, money thing. Money will be there. In fact, I dare to say this today. My money has grown like anything. Do you agree with me, Trisha? Trisha, as a family. My money has grown like anything. If I count the money that I have today, and if I look at the job that I would do in London, even if I had to get promotions, even if I had to go to that level, I would go up to certain amounts. If I calculate all that money, would not be the money or the amount that I receive today. What is it then to say? Is it better to trust the Lord? Amen? It is better to trust the Lord and depend on Him. God does just doesn't want me to experience. God wants all of us to experience the same thing. Yes? The Scottish power people I had to call and, and I was speaking to this lady. And she asked me, when are you going to get money? 
which car do you pay? Are you having the difficulties in your finances because of the lockdown, because of the virus and all that? So the lady wanted to hear most probably, yeah, there's a difficulty, and yeah, this and that. I said to her, I'm a pastor, I'm a Christian, I said, I trust the Lord, and I can pay it. God is with us. That other side, she was a Christian, so she responded to me as a Christian would do. What is your answer today to the virus? What is your answer today? To the time and situation we are in today. What is your answer today to the world that says that the economy is going down, people are losing jobs, this and that? And what is your answer? Can you say to yourself today, standing up, I'm a Christian. I believe in the Lord. I trust in the Lord. I will pay everything. I will pay everything. My first owner. Second owner, first owner also is good. In fact, that's another story. But my second owner, beautiful guy, his name is Martin. He's got a few houses in uh, South London, Forest Hill side. He's from Anglican Church. Knows church very well. But I said, I'm interested in your flag. The question that agency and everybody ask, and then he also asked me, What's your income? Where do you work? I said, I'm a missionary. And he understood what missionaries are. I said, well, Yeah, but uh, where? How much money you get? Is, is there a salary? And um, I went to see the flag, and then we spoke again the same thing. He, in fact, had asked me to bring the, the bank statement to show him what the money is coming from, <coughs> how much. Three months back still. Anyway, I walked in. He said, can I take the video? I took the video, I spoke. He said, you know, Raju, I, I know that he got his provider. But I've got a mortgage to pay and I need this, this rent. I said, Martin, your money will be there one day earlier. Yeah? The rent will be in your account one day earlier. And never I will call you to say, can I pay later? I don't have it. That's what my word to Martin was. And we took the flag. A miracle happened. How that flag came in. We took it. Eight years we stayed in that flag. In fact, a lot of you have seen that flag. Some of you have stayed with us there. Eight years. We never called to say, Martin, we don't have money. Eight years, we never called to say, Martin, can we do it after two days? Eight years, we didn't say to Martin, can you reduce the rent now? No. It went to Martin every month before one day. Eight years. Praise the Lord. God is faithful. What's your response? Is your response is my statement? Is your response is my job? Or is your response and I'm a Christian, I believe in the Lord, I trust in Him. The good word that Paul is talking is what? What are, what are the things that are expected from you and me? When we read this, this, this third verse, which is chapter 2 Ephesians, it says that, So we can do good things He planned for us long ago. What are these good things beforehand that he wants you and me to do? What are these things? Since? Can you can you just speak it out so that we all can learn together, and then we'll pray. It gives someone a tract when you feel God leading you to do it as you're walking down the street or on the tube, and maybe God's going to really use that tract very powerfully in their life. Amen. Good work. Good things. Evangelism. What else? Healing the sick. Amen. Praying for the sick, yes. What else? Prison ministry. Hmm? Prison ministry. Go to the prison and visit the prisoners. What else? Helping somebody who's you know, in need, uh, maybe lacking food, they just need basic support. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Giving. 
food or helping into their needs. What else? <coughs> Speaking a word of encouragement when someone Amen. really needs to hear it, they might be down and be divinely inspired. <coughs> yes, praise the Lord. What else? What else? Come on, Trisha, quick, quick. Um, given to people who are in need. Giving to people, yeah. David said that you are in need. Come on, come on, quick, quick. So, so in the church family, so that the church can happen and we can have time to fellowship like this. Amen. Yes, serving in the church. Talking faith. Yes, like I said, that I said to the uh, Martin that I trust in the Lord. Yeah? Yes. Talking faith, encouragement, <clears throat> giving to one another. Do you give? Do you think that when you were a baby that there was a plan of God? There would be a givers? Yes. What do you do with your giving? Where do you give with your giving? If you're given, what, how much you're given? What is, if God had to bring a statement of yours, you know, you have a statement from your bank, yeah? If God had to bring a statement from heaven, what would be your statement? Will it be a half page or just two lines or will it be a big, big file? You know, that you've given, 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 given. What would be your statement? And remember, there's going to be a statement for all of us. Because Jesus said that, you know, when you speak to people, tend to win. You win. You speak to people, people, sometimes friends and family, and everyone's worried about what's going on. God will come into that conversation usually, and you are giving a lot of encouragement and uplift. That's what I would be giving. Yes, praise the Lord. And that's seven days a week doing that kind of thing. Yes. Being fruitful. Being faithful, a peacemaker, living in unity, forgiving others, loving others. Amen. Some people leave the church because they just can't love somebody and forgive somebody. And they just go. But do you want to be that person? You want to be a person who would love and forgive? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. These good works and good things Paul also says doesn't save you, doesn't take you to heaven or salvation. But if you're saved, these good things cannot be hidden from you. You don't have any excuse if you're saved, if you have a salvation. It should come out of you. Amen? Amen. So if it's not coming out of you, then I want to say to you, you need to... Look into your life that you really, have you really received the salvation? Have you ever or really been saved? If something is missing into your life. Amen. Praise the Lord. Look into your life. If these things are not there, then there is a problem. About your saving and about your salvation. And God has a plan that you won't remain the same, but you would be changed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's close our eyes and you respond to the Lord today. Where are you? Adam, Adam. Then he said to Samuel, Samuel, Samuel. Then he said to Paul when he was Saul. And Saul said, who are you? A voice came. Jesus said, I am the same that you are persecuting. <coughs> I feel the Lord is saying exactly what he said to Saul today. Who are you, Lord? The Lord said and speaking to somebody, I am Jesus, the one that you disobey. 
The one you promised but you never fulfilled. The one who is hard and hearted, the one doesn't want to change, the one just wants to do what you want to do. We just want to say thank you, God, for, for the time that I was in my mother's womb. And while I was developing there, God, even my parents were not even married. They didn't even plan, they didn't even see each other. But you had already planned for me to be born in that house, to have that surname, to have that mother and that father. It was predestined, it was pre-planned, God. Thank you. Thank you for your wonderful, beautiful plan, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. You've done a wonderful work by making me God. Do you want to say that? You made me wonderful, a masterpiece, beautiful, handsome. I'm fearfully made, beautiful. I'm a precious child of God. I'm not alone, forsaken. My God is with me. To say thank you, God. Thank you, Father. Praise your name, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God, for, for the choice, Lord. I was chosen God. Long, long back. Long, 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 long back. To be who I am today. But I just feel that some of you even feel sorry or feel shy or scared. To say I'm a Christian. I go to church. I pray. I trust God. I believe in Jesus. I just feel that some of you hide who you are in your workplace. I just feel some of you just hide stuff and do things. Not to show the Lord, but to show others. Not to please the Lord, but please people. Feel the prophecy of uh, Sister Kipsa and what she spoke. The Lord is calling out to you. Somebody who just doesn't want to respond, somebody who just doesn't want to do the right thing. But I also feel that for somebody over here, the Lord is calling you into a more deeper relationship. He says to a female over here, a woman over here, I love you. I love you. There's one sister over here, the Lord is saying, I love you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. There's a man over here, the Lord is saying, get married. My plan was for you to get married. I predestined this plan long ago, get married. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Praise your name, God. There's somebody over here, I see a picture of a person whose hand has got money inside, a note, a money note. And the Lord is saying, give it up. But you're holding, you're not living. Your hand is sweaty, you're sweating with a sweaty hand, but you're not giving up money. That's how you love money. Money is everything for you. Money is God for you. The Lord is saying, give up, give up, give up the love of money. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. 
There's somebody the Lord is saying fast and pray. Not that I want to see you hungry. But something that you can sick his face fast and pray. Stay away from food. So you can spend more time in prayer. When you eat, you sleep. You feel sleepy. You go away. Fast and pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Praise your name, Lord God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. If anybody feels any prophecy, just, just feel free to speak it out. God is saying something to for somebody. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. There's somebody who is mind. I see an ant all over your mind. Like an ant. Hundreds and thousands. And those ants are buddies. That's who you are. Buddies, 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 buddies. The Lord says, I have not given up on you. How long are you going to continue in the life of buddies? You have been there for years and years. And how long you chose to be there. Come out today. 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 Thank you, Lord. Come out today. Thank you, Jesus. Come out today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. If there is anything that I have not said, but you feel that that is in your life, just pray it out and just give it up. Live. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. But there's somebody who here. The Lord says, I'm pleased with you. I'm absolutely happy in everything that you do. You are so beautiful, the Lord says. You've done well. You've done good. And I'm very happy with you. I'm very happy with you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Somebody, the Lord says, carry on what you're doing. Because you're doing what I have called you to do. Do what you're doing because I have told you to do what you're doing. I've appointed, I've chosen. You are in the right place, the Lord says. Continue what you're doing. Thank you, Lord. It's not about relationship. It's about the work for the Lord that you are doing. Do continue what you are doing. The Lord says, I'm pleased with you. I'm pleased with you. I'm happy for you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Praise your name, Jesus. Yes, to somebody the Lord says, if you break out, if you walk out, to trust me, you will see a bigger day. You will see a mighty miracles. You will see a mighty days into your life. If you break out, if you walk out, trusting the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Lord Jesus, we thank you for today, God. This is the day that the Lord has made. And we receive today everything that you've given to us, God. Thank you, Lord, for... For our birth and before birth, Jesus. Thank you for all the plan. Thank you, Lord, everything what you have predestined, pre-planned, God. Everything was beautiful, Jesus. You want to continue to walk in, continue remaining, Jesus. Be faithful to you, God, and do everything that required, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. And from today, may you see the plan of God that was there for your life many, many years ago. May you walk into his plan. May you obey him and do what he predestined for you to do what he has planned long ago for your life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord.